separated them from mature. After the huge success of the first three Halo games, Bungie wanted to step away from Microsoft and become independent again. However, since they were in a contract with Microsoft, they still needed to provide two more Halo games. Halo 3 ODST was one of those, and this game definitely was an unexpected twist in what had come previously. Set in the perspective of an elite unit of Marines known as Orbital Drop Shock Troopers, this game takes place in between the events of Halo 2 and Halo 3. During this story, you primarily play as the rookie as he gets separated from his squad and tries to piece together what happened to them, while you the player will also play through their own perspective of their own adventures in this game. When it comes to the music in this game, it introduced a musical theme that no one expected in a Halo game. This particular tone is known as noir or crime jazz. This was a particular style of music that Marty was really enthusiastic to utilize in the Halo universe and this game was the perfect vessel for it. Of course, since we are playing as the battle-hearted ODSTs, we still need to have that knit and gritty style of music mixed with some military tempo themes and wailing guitars to give that human rooted touch that you would expect from characters like this. Now, I won't pretend to fully understand noir style music, but I can understand how its utilization in specific moments of this game adds a great layer of depth to the gameplay experience. One thing I need to address is throughout the video you will hear me address the track names by their listings on the album. However, I will be discussing specific moments within the track that actually have their own titles to them. So, I will display them here, with the name of the piece and the original track on the album it comes from. Up to this point, the Halo 3 ODST menu is probably the most unique and interesting menu of all the Halo games. I think it's because it sets the tone of the game right after the disc loads. Instead of jumping into the menu, we get a short intro video describing the current situation in the Halo universe. 
This is important since we all just finished Halo 3 and saw the end, and we would be confused starting this game without knowing why we are still fighting the Covenant. But immediately after this video, we get the menu with the rookie, your player character, in the background and the crime jazz motif kicks in, letting us know what this game's main tone will be. Alongside this familiar theme, much of the game's soundtrack is also heard in the menu if you sit long enough. I think it was smart to include a lot of different tracks here so that the player, while they navigate the menu, is subconsciously having the atmosphere of the game constructed inside them before they start the first mission. Without further ado, let's prepare to drop. We are shown once again a quick introduction video that details the Halo Universe current situation. Afterwards, we see some ODSTs hovering around a command station, viewing the latest battle reports. The music starts with a somber tone, as we can understand from here that the UNSC is not doing too well in this conflict. Once Buck and Dare walk into the room, we get that familiar smooth jazz sound followed by some light piano keys to signify the mysterious tone shift as they both argue on what information can be shared or not. As soon as the drop pod hatch closes, bass drums kick in to add tension in the air as we get ready to literally drop from space on top of the Covenant flagship. In my opinion, for ODST and Reach, Marty uses these strong drum lines as a means of marking military movement in these games, which really adds to the experience almost like war drums, preparing us for battle ahead. While you are falling, the music continues to build in tension until it hits this crescendo with the Covenant ship tearing a hole in slip space right in front of you, and creating an EMP shockwave that knocks everyone out of the sky like insects. The string instruments screeching in your ear as the screen fades to black, and you hurl down towards an unknown destination. With the rookie waking up from the crash, it's time to hop out of our pod and figure out where we are at. The track, the rookie, creeps up on us as we jump out of our pod and familiarize ourselves with this new environment. We aren't on Halo anymore. This time, it's the streets of New Mombasa in the aftermath of the Covenant Cruiser escaping. Back to the rookie, during our investigation, a mix of ambience and musical tracks cue in and out while we duck into buildings and eliminate these invaders one after another. The music here really adds to the level of depth in this game's immersion, especially when you are in tight corridors and enemies appear inside the buildings. It triggers you to be cautious as you search for clues. Speaking of clues, we come to our first one, a familiar looking helmet. A cutscene is triggered with some flashback audio clips of some voices that we recall hearing earlier. Are you gonna tell us her name, Gunny? Ms. Naval Intelligence. Our new boss. Check your mouth, find your chairs, and get set for a combat drop. Give me a sec. I hit my heart. My heart won't open. How about yours? Ah, works great. Right. When you get done tuning around, I could use some help. Uh, did I do something wrong? Because the only thing I regret about you and me not knowing you were a spook when we first met. I would have been a lot less charming. That's what I missed most about you, Buck. Well, your mouth was always moving faster than your brain. Look, don't start about my job. We both agreed to end it. That was years ago, Veronica. I'm a little fuzzy on it. Uh, details. Must have met a lot of other saps since then. Why pick me for the safari? First, you're the best soldier I know, and second... You still don't remember 
remember that night? Would you ask me in the morning? I remember not getting an answer. Say again, Buck. You're breaking up. I said stay put. I'm on my way. Buck doesn't have the softest of landings, and after a quick chat with Dare, we must make haste to her position. The music cues in as soon as the visor flashes, and we get a strong bass line, which gives us focus as we selectively fire at our targets and inch forward in this concrete jungle. The track, more than his share, brings to us this cool bass line with an airy high vocal harmonic, which elevates a sense of daze as we see particles flying in the air from the after effect of the slip space rupture. I'm sure if any one of us were rocked around in a small pod like that, it would mess up our senses. Luckily for Buck, he is used to this sort of thing. As we progress some more, we can trigger a dialogue discussing the elites and brutes shooting each other to death, in which we, the player, know why that happened. After this, the same drumline continues, but this time a strong bass is played with some strings in the background, continuing our rhythm as we shoot down some jackal snipers. Dare chirps into our comms and informs Buck that the enemy is too close for her pod, and he needs to hurry up. The music drops hard and the percussion instruments increase their speed as now the situation has turned dire. What makes it worse is this little plaza you are in. It's filled with grunts, jackal snipers, brutes and even hunters. All obstacles that are slowing you down from reaching Dare who is just a block away. You can overcome this by letting the music center your focus on eliminating foes one at a time between cover and using all the weapons that are dropped afterwards. At one point, I ducked into a building to find some weapons, and a hunter followed me into there, which scared the living hell out of me. Once the Covenant are dealt with, we rush to the next block and kill the grunts that are pelting the drop pod with plasma fire. We get a cutscene showing the pod is empty and an angry engineer getting ready to attack us. Luckily, Rome was nearby and shot it. With their feud settled, this wraps up Buck's mission and the reason why the recon helmet was found by the rookie in that odd spot. With the tickling of the ivories and the smooth sacks bellowing over this dark and rainy night, the rookie looks out into the street and sees the signs change, almost pointing in a specific direction. The track, Difference for Darkness, is one of my favorite pieces from this game and is very beautifully composed. I could easily listen to this track while falling asleep. Just a side note, it sounds like a small piece from the latter half of this track is also used in Halo Reach but expanded upon very nicely. The track starts with this mysterious theme and leads into a section with the strings moving up and down and the piano leading the melody with almost a soaring type feeling. After following some mysterious signs, the rookie finds his next clue, a broken drone, and we trigger the next mission. You have a Mickey? Dutch? Negative. We need to get above this crap. Link with the B net. One of our drones must have seen where they hit. Good hunting, boys. I'm keeping my boots on the ground. It's time to take over Dutch and help him out of his predicament. After the roar of the drones, the drums kick in and a heavy beat follows. This track, the Menagerie, gives us this weighty feel as we lug around a Spartan laser and flip over a warthog with ease. Dutch is the biggest of the squad and you almost feel like a Spartan during this mission. That familiar drum line plays as we get down to business mowing down enemy infantry and vehicles while driving through this interesting wildlife nature preserve. After linking up with the local unit and making your way deeper into the preserve, Dutch needs to spend some time eliminating some rapes from the area. As we grab some power weapons and get into position, the latter portion of the menagerie chimes in with electric tones in the background, with the main melody creeping up as more enemies attempt to overrun your position. The situation here becomes grim as you receive new orders from the man in charge of this unit and race towards your next mission objective, 
But then, the space elevator collapses right in front of you, and the rest of the area is filled with scattered debris. The music comes crashing down on you just like the elevator. I love how small pieces of the track add such great tension to the sequence in this game, as you see the space elevator contort, twist, and explode in a beautiful sequence. One of my favorite tracks kicks us into gear, almost giving us a theme for our boy Dutch. A great electric guitar brings the melody to us as we deal with the final batch of enemies. It's exclusively strong while you are driving, so make sure you stay in your vehicle. As we get closer to the end, the track starts adding more musical elements to it with strings kicking in, adding more stress to you as the goalpost nears. With Dutch making a daring jump out of the park, the mission closes out and we return to the rookie. Ah, uh, Lord, I didn't train to be a pilot. Tell me I don't have any more flying to do today. So, was that a yes or a no? Amen. The loud thud of the drone being dropped closes out Dutch's mission, and Asphalt and Evolution begins to play. This track sounds very eerie as the story so far is still fuzzy and confusing for the rookie. In sections like this, it's fun to just roam around and explore the city, even if you're by yourself. The music is there to comfort you for some time as you dodge enemy patrols and find secret audio logs in this large section of the city. But don't be alarmed, even when the music fades away. The ambience and sounds of the city just immerse you even further. The rookie finds his next clue in the form of a gauss turret, and the next mission begins. Scattered, dead, I don't know. That's too bad. We're gonna need all the men we can get. Take a get, genius! Son of a gun! Wanna live? Get your ass out of the street! Mickey finds himself in the middle of a firefight, and his attention is turned towards a scorpion tank parked across the plaza. Time to bring some more metal to the fight. Traffic Jam cues in with a strong brass section, leading the melody as the Scorpion Tank tears through the Covenant with ease. A cool point with this track is how it grows in complexion as you drive through these streets, and more enemy units continue to block your path. This buildup just adds to the intensity of enemy squads that are appearing around every corner of this dense concrete jungle. The second part of the song is one of my favorite sections. It has a bass line that starts off quiet and a sick drum line that marches to the same beat as your destruction. Finally, a guitar line is added as you meet up with Dutch in the same area, blending the two themes into one. After a quick firefight while holding this position, the mission closes out with Mickey and Dutch being recruited for a demolition job. You heard from Gunny? No. Romeo neither. Well, I guess it's just you and me. My vote? Hold up, wait for backup. Thank God! Does one of you know how to use explosives? Your vote? Just got overruled. Oh.
Returning to the rookie, it's time to go investigate what this demolition job is all about. A beautiful piano arrangement, Neon Night, accompanies us as we head towards the firefight location that we just saw. Something as simple as the piano playing single notes while subtle rain falls down does wonders to the player's senses as they continue piecing together this long puzzle. When you unlock the same doors that Dutch and Mickey went through, we see a giant smoldering building ahead with Covenant ships patrolling the area. The rookie walks up to a plate of some kind and the next mission begins. Stand by to On my mark. We're way off course. We're heading exactly where I need to go. Hurry up. Look, if you want to do this, be my guest. But this ain't a job you want to rush. that do it? Signal's good. Arm the other detonators and pull back to me. Come on, tough guy. We got to blow this bridge. Duck, arm the other charges. What about those rays? Forget about them. We got explosives to set. In this level, one of my favorite tracks is played, The Office of Naval Intelligence. To set the tone, the music brings us back to that heavy, rhythmic percussion we always hear with Dutch and Mickey, but also with a countdown kind of feel to it as we set charges across the bridge and dodge the enemy wraiths peltering us with mortar fire. After the bridge is destroyed, we go inside the Oni Alpha Site courtyard and prepare for a firefight with troops landing inside already. The music shifts to a brass opening with a string choir supporting it, which allows us to regain our focus for the battle ahead while signifying the grand spectacle the Oni building presents in this city. In this section, we will need to hold off the enemy for quite some time, and the music here continues to build up in intensity too. A common technique that continues to be used in firefight sequences some of the music heard here I believe was used as a foundation for music in Halo Reach because it caught my attention while I was listening to this album repeatedly. After eliminating what we can, we head inside and the objective changes to blowing up the building instead. The music played here has a very muted sound to it, reminding us how big this building is on the inside as the sound of tinkling brass hits the floor and the reverb of the gunshots bounce off the high ceiling. The music continues to creep along as we take the elevator up to the top. The level closes out on a final track with its groovy beats jumping along like the jetpack brutes, with Dutch and Mickey boarding a pelican and the Oni Alpha site exploding in the background. Sergeant Buck? Sure do! Patching him through! Glad you boys are safe and sound. And likewise, Gunny. You need a pickup? As long as you're offering. We're in the police HQ. Can you take us there? Affirmative. All right. Two up top. What? <laughs> this day ain't turning out so bad after all. Bits and Pieces opens for us as we observe the now destroyed Oni Alpha site smoldering in the distance. Along with the beauty of this fiery landscape, an equally beautiful track is played with the ivory keys twinkling along. The string choir also adds an uplifting feeling with its smooth transition from one measure to the next. This gives us a lighthearted feeling as the rookie continues to search for more clues. After following our nav some more, we find a sniper rifle hanging on a power line above. Affirmative. 
clear? Yeah, we're good. Hey, rookie, you out there? Respond, that's an order. Give it up, Gunny. Even if he ain't dead, he's lost in that soup. Our comms can't cut through that. Don't give up, huh? What if it were you down there? Just saying. I ain't dead. <laughs> You're a piece of work, Romeo. Welcome aboard, ladies. First stop anywhere but here. Banshees, on your six. Hit the deck! We're losing her. Watch out! Vicky, ah! duck! Status! Alive or dead, we're pulling them out. You hear me? Make some noise. I get your back. We finally catch up with Buck and Rome as they scale skyscrapers to get a better vantage of their situation. It's up to us to rescue Dutch and Mickey in this high-rise area. The track, Skyline, kicks in with its heavy focus on the drum beat as we methodically take out enemies with our sniper rifle and move across these towers. It matches well with the role of being a sniper, hard pounding as you attempt to control your breathing and aim true while trying to not get distracted by the beautiful sea of clouds below. We also get a mix of ambient city sounds identical to previous levels, which adds a nice layer to the musical piece. As we get near our fellow squad mates, the music picks up as the player knows they are almost within reach. However, several enemies continue to block our path and the music grows with volume and vigor. After crossing a rather scary bridge, we are reunited with the team and the next battle begins. The last portion of Skyline kicks into high gear with its rock anthem tone fitting for these battle-hardened marines and their personalities. This little firefight is one of the most fun ones in the story with the amazing music and the wide variety of tools at your disposal. It truly showcases the badass imagery that ODSTs live up to. One final phantom approaches and the mission closes out and we get a cool cutscene. bad not good we're gonna get you out of here not by air we're not it's all right I know another way the track no stone unturned is another favorite of mine it comes with a lighthearted feel to it as the rookie is reassured that his team is still likely alive and surviving just fine. It's hard to make out if it's an English horn or a muted oboe instrument used for the melody, but it gives a nice unique flavor to the piece alongside the piano marking its own. He continues his search for the next clue, which brings him on the far side of the city leading into the train systems. We're gonna get you out of here. We're almost there. <laughs> Put me down. Put me down for a sec. <laughs> Dutch, medkit. What's wrong with him? He's got a punctured lung. Can't breathe.
Better? Now, now what? Trains ran underground up to the old city. We're gonna find one of the tunnels, walk on out of here. All right. You're gonna carry me all the way, sweetheart? I was planning on it, but now that you're feeling better. Get the door! This means we're screwed, right? Not yet. Wait here. We're gonna steal that ride. It's landing. Now's our chance, Mickey! It's time to travel underground and find a way out of the city. One Way Ride reminds us of this with its echoey bass line and muted instrument sounds. The team commandeers a phantom and Buck flies his banshee in support, clearing the way for his squad. I particularly like the track that accompanies us as we shoot anything that moves down below. The heavy use of drums to signify the weight of the phantom and the strings sounding with almost uncertainty as the squad tries to fly these alien ships with unfamiliar controls against the enemy. It blends well together and the composer knew what he wanted to give the player in this environment. One of the final pieces I'll mention is the subtle choir motif you will hear. It can be selected as this game's theme that you hear in some other tracks across the soundtrack. But specifically, this piece is here when you're traversing on foot in tight areas or even tall areas and really adds some depth to this listening experience. After destroying a scarab, the crew busts out of there and Buck needs to return to the city to recover something. Keep her steady, Mickey. You doing okay? Just glad we didn't go with your first plan. Look at those tunnels. Ones that aren't flooded are probably packed with buggers. Hell, I wouldn't go down there even if you ordered me to. Come on, Monica. What could be more important than that carrier? My orders. And Buck? Just call me Captain. Mickey, turn around. Find a safe place to set us down. What? Why? I lost something. Now I know where to find her. We are close to finding the final piece of this puzzle. As the rookie searches for one final clue in the city, the tickling of the ivories comforts us yet again. The light at the end signifies that our hunt is almost over and just a few more Covenant soldiers stand in our way. It's a very soothing song that wraps us up in a warm blanket as the night continues to rain down upon us. The final clue has been located and it looks like we're heading deep below. A familiar voice keys into our comms, requesting help throughout this search. 
We get this soft ambience as the darkened hallways and electronic sounds reverberate around us. Atmospheres like this bring you back to the games like Metroid or Dead Space with its eerie music and alien enemies jumping out at you around corners. We find Dare trying to complete her mission and retrieve the superintendent's data before the Covenant does. Much of this level continues to use the eerie, isolated sounding tones as you push to the data center. The music picks up as we escort this new friend of ours through the sublevels alongside Buck and Dare to escape through an elevator back to the surface. What was that for? Abandoning the mission. What mission? You dropped off the grid. My squad was scattered. <clears throat> After a personal moment between Buck and Dare, we need to trek through the city and bring our new friend along with us. However, a ton of enemies are in between us and our squad. We make it to the highway where the majority of this mission takes place, and we are introduced to a great track. Driving around in the Warthog brings us a layer of rush to this section. What is interesting about this track is how it builds up over time. When you pass through each massive door into a new section of the highway, another layer of instrumentals is added. This is done with the first half of the track, while the last half of the track brings back the theme of this game and continues to add more intensity to your experience. As you can see, a Covenant carrier in the distance begin glassing the city. The track hits its crescendo when the Scarab appears and you make your exit off the highway. The final battle in this game is done in a firefight style with Buck, Dare and the Rookie making a final stand as they wait for the rest of the squad to arrive. The music starts off low with the brass section playing the melody and the sound of the war drums in the background as phantoms begin their approach and offload troops. This track builds up too as more and more enemies come to eliminate the engineer. The war drums also tend to get louder and louder in some parts which could add to your anxiety a bit. While you are fighting the last wave of enemies, your squad shows up and eliminates the Wraith, mortar firing you from the back. The level closes out with the squad being reunited and making their escape from the city. That thing safe? Long as it don't get hit. What can I say? It was a hell of a night. Easy does it. We went through hell for that? Give him some meds, would you? It's important. It knows things. <laughs> Heck, honey. I wasn't talking about the alien. Mickey, I'm sending you a very special co-pilot. Oh, come on! I don't want one of those things in here! It won't bite, and unlike you, it knows what to tell those cruisers to keep them off our tail. I think they're too busy to care. Looks like they found what they're looking for. What about you? What about us? Win this war? Then ask me that again.
Halo 3 ODST was not only a huge change in the narrative and gameplay, but with the music especially, a new journey was forged for us to enjoy. The music once again can tell a story on its own. Each piece is like an episode in a series, telling its own unique story while also keeping the game's theme in mind. Another great point about this soundtrack is how the music is also composed to accommodate the situations you find yourself in. For example, intense firefights bring that heavy technotic sound or bass war drums while explosions and bullets fly by you. Then, during the quiet investigative sequences, that comforting jazz with the sax swoops in as the dark clouds above trickle with rain. Also, while you're exploring parts of the city, the ambience and the sounds of this abandoned city keep you alerted with its subtle pieces. Overall, this soundtrack still blends well with the Halo theming, and you can tell that Marty had a lot of fun composing new themes and melodies for this unique game. Also, it's nice to see the evolution in music and see how musical components from this game are used in Halo Reach later. I want to thank all of you watching for keeping up with this series of mine as I discuss the music of Halo. Thank you to all the new subscribers too that have discovered this channel this past year. I apologize for the long gap between Halo 3 and this video. I wanted to try to release these videos monthly or every two months. Keep an eye out for the final video in this Bungie era, Halo Reach. When it comes to Halo 3 ODST, it was one of the last console titles that I played in the Halo franchise before the Halo MCC was released. I'm glad that even though I knew the story of the game already, I was still entertained by the gameplay and of course the musical experience. I am deeply grateful for the old crew at Bungie for producing such a masterpiece of the game, and for Marty O'Donnell for composing this amazing, unique soundtrack that I can listen to without fatigue. Thank you to those listening for coming along on this journey on rediscovering our love for the music of Halo. I'll see you in the next video.